Hello students, in the previous lesson we had discussed about electronic configuration. Electronic configuration is the arrangement of electrons in an atom. We had discussed that the first shell of an atom can hold up to two electrons. The second shell of an atom can hold up to eight electrons. Now students, an atom cannot exist independently. It is a particle that takes part in a chemical reaction to form new substances or compounds. Now some elements like helium, neon, argon do not participate in any chemical reaction. These type of elements are described as unreactive or stable atoms. They are stable because their outermost shells are complete which makes an atom stable. Now if the atom has only one shell like the helium atom has only one shell the stable state can be achieved if two electrons are present in it. So the helium atom has one shell and it has two electrons in an outermost shell. So helium atom is a stable atom. In case of neon, argon and krypton, if the atom has two or more than two shells, then the stable state is achieved when the outermost shell has maximum number of eight electrons. So these atoms have eight electrons in the outermost shell which make these atoms unreactive or stable. They do not take part in any chemical reactions. But what makes other elements to react with one another? The answer is valency. So students, in this lesson we will study about valency and its types. Students, valency can be defined as the combining capacity of an element with another element. Valency relates the number of electrons that can be gained or lost in the valence shell. Now by combining capacity we mean that how many electrons an atom can gain or lose in its valence shell. The valence shell is the outermost shell of an atom. Now let's understand valency with the help of an example. Now here you can see the oxygen atom. The number of protons in an oxygen atom are 8, so the number of electrons will also be 8. Since the number of protons and electrons are equal, overall the oxygen atom has no charge. Now for an atom to be stable, the outermost shell should have 8 electrons. But in case of oxygen atom, the outermost shell has only 6 electrons, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. This shows that the atom is reactive or unstable. Now in order to complete its outermost shell, the oxygen atom should take at least 2 electrons from another atom. Now in this diagram you can see that the oxygen atom outermost shell has achieved its octet state by gaining 2 electrons from another atom. Now, since it has gained two electrons from another atom, so the number of electrons in this atom are 10 and the number of protons are same that is 8, which shows that the oxygen atom is now negatively charged since the number of electrons are more than the number of protons. Now, how many electrons the oxygen atom has gained? It has gained two electrons. So, the valency of the oxygen atom is 2. The oxygen atom is carrying a negative charge because the number of electrons are more than the protons and it has valency 2 since it has gained how many electrons? 2 electrons. So when an atom gains or either loses an electron, it becomes a charged particle and a charged particle is called an ion. It is charged because it contains an unequal number of protons and electrons. 
Previously, the oxygen atom had eight protons and eight electrons, which shows showed that the atom was not charged. It has no charge. But after gaining two electrons, it gained a negative charge because the number of protons and number of electrons are not same. So when it is not same, it becomes a charged particle, which is called an ion. Classification of valency. Valency is classified as monovalent, divalent, trivalent and tetravalent. Monovalent. Elements that have the ability to gain or lose one electron. Example, sodium, potassium, chlorine, etc. Now here you can see the sodium atom. The outermost shell of the sodium atom contains only one electron. So, in order to achieve its octet state, it should lose one electron. When the sodium atom will lose one electron, the second shell is already in the octet state will make this atom stable. So, sodium is a monovalent atom because it has the ability to lose one electron. Chlorine is also a monovalent atom because it has the ability to gain one electron. The outermost shell of the chlorine atom has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In order to complete its octet state, it needs to gain one more electron. So, here the chlorine atom has more electrons because it is gaining one electron, so it is negatively charged. But the sodium atom is losing one electron, so the number of protons will be more than the electrons. So, the sodium atom will be positively charged. But both sodium and chlorine are monovalent because sodium has the ability to lose one electron and chlorine has the ability to gain an electron. Divalent Elements that have the ability to gain or lose two electrons. For example, calcium, magnesium, oxygen, sulfur. Now here you can see the oxygen atom. The outermost shell of the oxygen atom has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now in order to achieve its octet state, the oxygen atom must gain two more electrons. So divalent means when an atom has the ability to gain or lose two electrons. So the oxygen atom has the ability to gain two electrons to complete its outermost shell. So when the oxygen atom will gain two electrons, it will become negatively charged and the valency is two. Now magnesium atom outermost shell consists of two electrons. Now if the magnesium atom loses two electrons, the second shell will make the magnesium atom stable because it is already in its octet form. So magnesium atom will lose two electrons to make the atom stable. So oxygen atom is gaining two electrons whereas the magnesium atom is losing two electrons. So both these atoms are divalent. Trivalent. The word tri means three. Elements that have the ability to gain or lose three electrons. For example, boron, aluminium, nitrogen, phosphorus. Now, let's take the nitrogen atom. The nitrogen atom outermost shell has one, two, three, four, five. Now, the outermost shell in order to be stable should have 8 electrons. So it means the nitrogen atom needs 3 more electrons to complete its outermost shell. So here the nitrogen atom is gaining 3 electrons. Now let's look at the aluminium atom. The outermost shell of the aluminium atom has 1, 2, 3. So 
if the aluminium atom loses its three electrons the second shell will make the atom stable because it is already in octet form so aluminium atom will lose three electrons whereas the nitrogen atom will gain three electrons to complete its octet state so both nitrogen and aluminium are trivalent tetravalent the word tetra means four elements that have the ability to gain or lose four electrons for example carbon and silicon now carbon and silicon both show variable valencies it means that both these atoms either have the capacity to gain or lose four electrons from its valence shell now let's look at the carbon atom the outermost shell of the carbon atom contains four electrons so in order to achieve the octet state it can gain four more electrons but if it loses these four electrons the first shell is in duplet form can make the atom stable so the carbon atom can either gain four electrons to make the atom stable or it can lose the four electrons to make the atom stable Let's look at the silicon atom. The outermost shell contains four electrons. So in order to achieve the octet state, it can gain four electrons. But if it loses these four electrons, the second shell can make the atom stable because it is already in octet form. So the silicon atom can either gain four electrons to make the atom stable or it can lose four electrons to make the atom stable so both carbon and silicon are tetravalent because because both the atoms have the capacity to either gain or lose four electrons from their valence shell